We're going to now consider the important concept of stability. So remember that in a system that we want to control, we can draw that system as this. We have some command reference R and we have some output Y. And ideally we want R to be equal to Y all the time. In other words, the system output matches the input reference R all the time. Of course, this is not always going to be true because in addition to the reference command, we also have the disturbance W. And when this disturbance acts on the system, we're going to deviate from the input. So what we'd like to do is to want to keep R equal Y despite W, despite the disturbance W. And in doing so, if you're a stable system, then the control is going to return the system to stability uh, when, when uh, there's a problem. But if you have unstable system, bad things can happen. So when R is equal to Y, we see that the system is in equilibrium. And uh, we denote this condition when the, when the system is in equilibrium by the state vector X equals zero. So the state vector X, this is a vector, is going to be zero. That means that this uh, means that we always want to return the system to zero state. And uh, zero is basically redefined. Uh, we just subtract off whatever other values there are so that when the value of x is zero, then it's going to be equilibrium. And a system may never actually be in equilibrium, but it's always what we're trying to get to. So this is the goal, even if you know always are away from that goal. So in other words, if you think of it like this, and let's say x equals zero is here, and this is negative x and it's positive x. When x is negative, the control action should push x towards zero. And when, the, when it's positive, we should push x towards uh, zero as well in both directions. And so you want to make sure that the control action matches the amount of uh, displacement and of course what you see over here is this in this case we have a negative uh, we have a positive error and then here we have a negative error what this really says that is that we want the uh, control action to be uh, the uh, opposite of the error so the error is negative we want to push in the, the towards the zero direction okay so let's see an example of what might be actually a bad control design and I'm going to let you think about the following situation. So let's say that this is a shower head and there's water coming out of it. And on the wall uh, where the shower is, there is a control knob which you can turn towards hot or you can turn it towards cold. And here you are taking a shower in this uh, under the shower head. Let's also imagine that the uh, control, you turn the knob over here, there's a little bit of delay before the water temperature changes. And so in the beginning, what's going to happen is that, uh, let's say the water condition is cold. And so, and we want the temperature of the water, let's say for the sake of argument, is 30 degrees centigrade. That's what you want. And initially the water temperature, the cold water temperature is, let's say 10 degrees centigrade and the hot water temperature, let's say 50 degrees centigrade. Okay, so uh, as you can see, 30 degrees is half between 10 and 50. So we'd like the temperature to be sort of half cold and half hot water. So in the beginning, what happens is that you turn the water on and it's at 10 degrees. So let's draw the time versus temperature graph. So this is the uh, time over this axis. This is the temperature. And remember that for us, zero is going to be the value that you want. So zero actually means 30 degrees centigrade. And so we just redefine zero as 30. So actually zero degrees centigrade would be like minus 30 and then, and so on. And so the, the, the temperature values that we have are C equals 10, which is below zero. We can think of it as minus 20, and this is going to be plus 20, which is it's going to be 50 degrees. So you can see how we do that. Now, let's say that at the beginning of time, uh, you have cold water running in the pipes because there's no hot water. And so you're going to be at this point at time zero, the temperature is here. And so one control action you could do is to turn on the hot water at full blast. And when you turn hot water at full blast, the temperature is going to rise in some fashion. Let's just say it goes up like this. And now it's at this point you say, okay, the temperature is good. So I'm going to turn on turn off the hot water at this point over here. But however, you kept the water on and uh, it's a, there's a delay between the time that you turn the knob, that's the delay that I mentioned, and the time that you get the water. 
So the water temperature continues to rise in this way, and perhaps it goes up to uh, 50. Of course, it can't get beyond, uh, beyond plus 20, which is 50 degrees, and it stays there. And you say, ouch, this is really too hot. So you're going to reduce the temperature and turn the, uh, actually you're going to start reducing the temperature over here already. But uh, the water temperature is going to start coming down. And when it gets to zero, you say, okay, now I can turn off the, uh, turn off the cold water because you have to put the cold water on to reduce the temperature. But there's a delay, so it keeps going down again, and it goes to neg uh, negative 20. And then you say, oops, that's too cold, and you go up like this. So if I were to sort of redraw this, you could end up with a system that looks like this. You start at negative 20, and you go up to positive 20, and you go up and down like this. And on average, on average, you're getting water at the right temperature. But in fact, uh, this is not much fun at all. You're going to be scalded and freezing alternatively, uh, alternately, and uh, this is not really good at all. Things could get even worse. You know, you could be in a situation like this. You start off like in a slight deviation from here, and your control actions exacerbate so that you essentially end up with a system that is going to saturate at uh, minus 20 and plus 20, but in between kind of keeps oscillating uh, with this temperature. So, uh, so here you have a bounded oscillation. And here you have an oscillation that goes to saturation, which from our perspective goes from plus infinity to minus infinity, because uh, that's the maximum temperature you can actually reach. So what we'd like to have is neither of these. What we'd like to have is that if the temperature, so if I were to draw the ideal temperature to be at uh, zero over here, so I'll draw the black line over here at zero, and we have some excursion or deviation from zero. Let's say there's a deviation over here. We'd like it to rise quickly to zero and stay there. And if we go up for some reason, then we're going to come down quickly and stay there as well. So we'd like the graph to look something like this. It will show you the dotted uh, dashed red lines rather than the temperature above. And we'd like these excursions to be fairly small. So if the W disturbance is, let's say, 2 degrees centigrade or minus 2 degrees centigrade, we don't want us to go, we don't want ever to be in the zone over here, you know, which is above two or above minus two. We want to rapidly move the control back towards the zero point. And that would be what we would think of as being a stable system. Okay, so uh, another way of thinking about these uh, is to think about the stability in terms of stable, metastable, or an unstable system. So stable, unstable, and metastable or harmonic or oscillatory system. And so uh, in a stable system, think of a, a pencil that's lying on its side like this. And this pencil is going to, if you, if you give it a small push, it just rotates from that position to another position, which are both, uh, from our perspective, equilibrium. So when we have a small change in the in w that's that over here the system returns to stability in this case it returns to stability instantly so uh, so in fact it's very very stable in that it's also think of it as a for example a, a brick that's lying on the ground you, you you kick it it just stays in that stable position an unstable position would be that same pencil which is balanced on its tip and you know if it's in a it's, it's, it's in a um, quiet, airless room. It might even stay there for a bit. But the slightest push makes it fall over. And that would be unstable. And an oscillatory system, well, we don't, can't quite do that with a, with a pencil. But if you had a, a rocking chair, for example, like this, and then uh, you were to push the rocking chair with a small push, then you're just going to get the behavior to be an oscillatory, decaying oscillatory response. And uh, in other situations, if there was not much friction, the oscillations could continue for quite a long time, like a guitar string, and you would call that an oscillatory response. So all of these can be thought of as responses to small or bounded inputs. So uh, in other words, what we're looking at is when we have a bounded input, what happens to the output? In the case of a stable situation, when you have a bounded input, the output is bounded. In an unstable situation, a bounded input results in a large, unbounded, in this case, output. And in the oscillatory situation, a small bounded input results in the oscillation of the system, but within some bounds. It's a bounded oscillatory system. 
Okay. Of course, in practice, we're always going to have bounds because as you could remember from the shower example, we never can go to plus infinity and minus infinity. In any uh, real system, uh, we can never do that. But remember in the LTI system, uh, we are kind of guaranteed uh, that uh, because of the linearity, we don't never have any bounds. We're going to have plus infinity and minus infinity achievable. But in a practical system, what uh, unstable really means is that the system will saturate at the upper or lower bound as shown over here. This is the upper and this is lower even down here. Okay, so uh, let me just finish up with a couple of uh, definitions then. A system is said to be BIBO, which is bounded input, bounded output. If the output of the system is bounded in magnitude by some value, uh, so output is less than M, so some norm of the output is less than M, as long as the input, uh, the input in this case being the disturbance is less than some value M. So as long as the input is less than M, the output is less than capital M. And the other one is what's called zero input stable. And zero input is something I haven't discussed so far, but zero input basically means that no matter what your input state is, even it's a non-equilibrium state, if, the in, if, the, if R equals zero and the disturbance equals zero, then Y will basically tend to zero. In other words, if I have, if my reference says B at zero and there's no disturbance, means no disturbance, then uh, we are going to eventually find that the output goes to zero. And uh, what, what this means is that we, the system is sort of nice. It, it doesn't uh, on its own go into some uh, bad situations. And so in, uh, in this pencil over here, if you have the pencil on its side, it's zero input stable because if you do nothing to it, it's going to stay there. Uh, on the pencil that's on its tip is also actually zero input stable because we're not giving it, if you're not giving it any push, it's going to stay balanced on its side, on its tip. And similarly for the oscillatory system, the rocking chair. So if a system does not meet the criterion of zero input stable, it's actually very bad because it means that the system is inherently unstable. It's not actually uh, uh, in, a, in a stable situation at all. And in fact, the fighter jets are zero input. Uh, fighter jets turn out to be not zero input stable. So if you have a fighter jet that's flying through the air and you, you say, okay, stay in the same position, don't do anything, uh, unless you're constantly controlling the plane, it's just going to fall out of the sky. So uh, that's not zero input stable. Okay, so let's stop with this. And then uh, in the next little bit, the next two modules, what we'll do is look at the uh, mathematical definitions and analysis that build on these intuitions.